Hello there. Last episode we saw that light is... wavy. Not wavy as in fly fresh and stylish, but rather we saw that light is really just ripples and oscillations in what is known as the electric and magnetic fields. These light waves are smooth and continuous, like ripples in water. So how exactly did we prove that light is an electromagnetic wave? Well first, we used Maxwell's equations, which are basically four very important equations that describe electricity, magnetism, and their relationship to each other. We saw that with the correct technique, we could manipulate these equations into what's known as a wave equation. To get a more in-depth description of this process, I suggest you watch the last video. But for now, just know that the math does check out. We then performed a very famous experiment known as the double slit experiment. We essentially shot a laser through these two slits. This is where it got weird. If asked what light we expected to show up behind these two slits, it would seem obvious that we would expect two parallel bands of light. But that's not actually what happened. When we shot the laser through these two slits, we saw this interference pattern. This interference pattern is indicative of light's wave nature. So with all this evidence, it seems that we can conclude that light is an electromagnetic wave and, and that's that. But that's not actually the case. At the beginning of the 1900s, this guy, Albert Einstein, noticed something funky. He noticed that if you shine light onto a charged surface, or a surface with more electrons than protons, the excess electrons would begin getting ejected from the surface, and eventually the surface would lose all of its excess charge. This phenomenon is known as the photoelectric effect. But this interaction between light and matter had something weirder going on behind it. To show you what I mean, let's head back to my garage where I set up a little experiment. This is a very basic electrometer. We can tell whether or not a negative charge exists on it by looking at these two pieces of foil. For instance, after adding a charge onto the electrometer, we can see that the pieces of foil repel. If I then touch the electrometer, the electrons transfer to my hand and the pieces of foil come back together. Now that we know how the electrometer works, let's see if we can witness the photoelectric effect by discharging the electrometer with only light. We can use this metal surface as our target. I'm going to start with a high intensity lamp because I think if I hit the surface with a lot of energy, the electrons will begin getting emitted from the surface. So far, we can tell that the charge is still on the electrometer because the two pieces of foil are still repelling each other. So maybe we need a new strategy. Fortunately, I have this ultraviolet lamp that might just do the trick. This ultraviolet lamp has a lower intensity than my other lamp, meaning it puts out less energy. However, it has a higher frequency. As a reminder from last episode, a light's frequency tells us how quickly its electric and magnetic fields are oscillating. Red light has the lowest frequency of visible light, while violet light has the highest. So let's see if this high frequency, but low intensity, ultraviolet lamp can do the trick. As you can see, the foil pieces begin returning to each other, which means the electrons have been ejected from the surface, and we have just witnessed the photoelectric effect. However, this whole experiment seemed a little counterintuitive. One would usually suspect that a higher intensity light would make the surface start emitting electrons. But in reality, it is the higher frequency light that makes the surface start emitting electrons. Moreover, the intensity of the light, or the amount of energy we're hitting the surface with, has no effect on this process. So the big question remains, why? Fortunately, Albert Einstein had an hypothesis. Einstein believed that since a low frequency, high intensity beam of light could not eject electrons as the wave model would have predicted, 
The light is instead a swarm of discrete packets of energy. Essentially, he hypothesized that light is made up of these chunks of energy now known as photons. These photons' energies are proportional to the light's frequency, given by the equation E equals HF, where E is the energy of one photon, H is a constant that will later be measured by a physicist named Planck, and F is the frequency of the light. This theory is a solution to this problem because higher frequency light would therefore have higher energy photons. These higher energy photons would then have the energy to eject individual electrons, unlike lower energy photons from lower frequency light. At this point, you may have caught on to a very important contradiction. All of the last episode and the beginning of this episode, I was talking about how light is this smooth, continuous wave. Yet Einstein's theory of discrete packets of energy completely contradicts this idea. So, you might be wondering, which is it? Is it a smooth, continuous electromagnetic wave? Or is it a discrete packet of energy? Well, it's both. This seemingly contradictory explanation of light's nature is known as wave-particle duality. Before you attempt to visually understand what this means, I would like to remind you that these processes happen on a scale so inconceivably small that our attempts to logically understand what's happening from our experiences on a much larger scale are almost pointless. However, what we can do is look at the evidence we've gathered, whether it be the evidence of light's wave nature from the double slit experiment, or the evidence of light's particle qualities from the photoelectric effect, and try to piece together an answer to this extremely difficult question, what is light? To end this video, I'm going to give you a little hint of what's to come next. In 1924, a physicist named de Broglie began to theorize. He knew that in physics there are always patterns, and there are rarely individual phenomena. So he thought, if light which was always thought of as a wave can also be described as having particle qualities, then maybe matter, such as electrons, that have always been thought of as particles, can also have wave qualities. And as crazy as this sounds, he was right. 